Hello, in this tutorial we're going to be going through the Wavetable synthesizer. Basically, Wavetable is available in Ableton 10 and on. And basically what it allows you to do is use uh, a, a synthesizer to create sounds in a you know, an almost completely new way, uh, using old techniques, uh, but in a, in, a, in a different way, as I say. So basically um, what Wavetable means is it actually allows you to morph between different waveforms. So each one of these forms is laid out on a table, essentially, and then you can morph between one and the next and the next. For example, you could morph between a sine wave and a square wave. So if you morph, you're gradually changing, you're morphing out of a sine wave and into a square wave. So you'll have loads of different waveforms between those as well that you've just created by morphing. So it allows you to create really complex waveforms and uh, it lets you create it in a way that uh, you wouldn't be able to create using any other synthesizer. And the other good thing about this is you can actually um, basically see exactly what's happening in real time. So when you're changing and morphing between one oscillator and another, or one waveform and another, you can actually see that in real time. So if you look down here on the bottom left hand side of the screen, this is what you see when you open Wavetable for the first time. It's also under uh, Instruments Wavetable. You can uh, go to the drop down menu and you can select any of the presets here, just like you can in any other instrument. But let me talk you through the lay of uh, the user interface and exactly where everything is. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press uh, the toggle uh, view button and basically what this will do is this will open up the synthesizer so we can see it uh, in a much bigger and clearer context. And there we have it. Now, don't panic. <laughs> There's a lot going on here, but that's fine. Um, so if we look here, first of all, at the very top uh, where it says oscillator 1 and then oscillator 2. So these are two oscillators. So we're used to seeing oscillators and every other synth. These are laid out slightly differently, but it's the same principle. Um, we also have a sub oscillator here. And basically what that is, is um, it allows you to create a third oscillator and um, it, it, it actually creates that based on the key that you're pressing. So if I press C2 or C3 and I turn on the sub, it'll play this a few octaves down at C as well. I suppose it makes sense. If it didn't do that, it wouldn't be in key just so you know, and you've got your gain here and you can adjust your tone as well. We'll go back to that later on. So, um, each oscillator has a number of different wavetables. So you've got basic wavetables, um, you've got uh, collection, complex, distortion, filter. So these are different banks of presets, essentially. And what you can do is you can select a particular bank. Uh, we'll go to basics for now. And then we've got basic shapes. So that's what this sounds like. Even that's nice. And if I go to any of the others, that will change. Uh, fifth Brutal. And it also changed the waveform up here as well. So you can actually see exactly how this thing is generating sound based on its waveform. Lovely. Okay. So, um, as I say, there's lots of different ones. You get complex. Let's have a listen to that. Now, if I want to flick through all the ones that's within uh, this bank, I can just use the arrows here. Sounds like a clockwork orange or something. Uh, okay, cool. Let's keep that. Now, um, if we look here, uh, exactly what we have with the on-off button for the oscillator, we have our different banks and then patches within the bank. This is our volume here. Uh, it's currently at zero dB. This is pan left or right. Uh, C stands for center. Now, these are all great. Um, these are all similar to every other synth. This next thing isn't. <laughs> uh, so what we have is we have an effects mode. It's set to none by default. And then you have FM, classic and modern. FM stands for frequency modulator. Yeah can't say it, frequency modulation. And uh, what it allows you to do is to modulate one source with another. So for example, um, I could modulate and move the pitch of this 
uh, oscillator with this one or with this or with this or this, this or this. It's just completely uh, down to you how you want to do this. And I'll give you some examples as we go along. But what I want to do is I want to start off with, uh, let's go with FM. So that's frequency modulation. And I'm going to hold down uh, C. I'm going to turn on the sub. And then I'm going to start messing around with the tuning. And turn up the amount. And you can see the waveform here morphing as I do that. Hours of endless fun. Here we go. We've got an old school housey techno vibe already. <laughs> Loads you can do. Now, wouldn't it be nice if uh, you could morph this uh, back and forth as well as up and down? Well, you can. That's what this function does here. So this is the position of your wave. This is your wave, this uh, this yellow section. These are all your different waveforms that you can select from within this pattern, but at the minute it's just playing this bottom one. So if I hold down that same note again and move it up. Cool. Very, very nice. I'm going to go to classic mode here and see what our options are with that. So we have sync and pulse width. So pulse width modulation allows you to basically use a square wave to generate your sound. And then it, it, it kind of morphs that square wave out of its square form and into something more uh, rectangular or, you know. So basically, yeah, you can completely annihilate it. Uh, let's just reset this a second. So this is, this is the... It's basically not doing anything at the minute in classic mode, so let's have a listen. Then we'll add some pulse width modulation. And you can go negative and positive here as well. Okay, let's try some sync. So, as you can hear, you can complete some really complex uh, sounds. This is great for sound design. I am just moving that up and down with the mouse. But wouldn't it be nice if we can move that um, in a way where we can have it just moving constantly without having to use the mouse? Well, there is. So down here uh, in this section, this is called your modulation matrix, and it's kind of like a modular synth in the way that it works. So what you can do is you can essentially patch anything to anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to patch the LFO to the uh, to the wave position amount. So if I click here, and basically anything that I click on, um, it will show up down here in the modulation matrix, and then you can select a modulation source. Um, to modulate that thing. So at the minute, we've clicked here. So that's coming up now. Oscillator, or sorry, oscillator one position. That's what this is. It changes the position of os of, of oscillator one. So um, if I go down now and select LFO one, which is this, this LFO and this movement should move this up and down at the rate that is going at here and at the shape that is going at here. So let's try that LFO one. So I'll hold down C and then I'll bring this up. If I change the waveform, it'll change its behavior. If I change the shape, it'll change the shape and behavior as well. Very nice. 
and you can obviously get some very, very unusual um, amounts here as well. You can do it very slowly. Let's try a different sound. So this should go right down and up now. Excellent. Might take a wee bit of time to come back down again. Unless I change key. But yeah, very, very nice. Okay. So just a recap, what's happening now is uh, this waveform is moving up and down through the wavetable and it's been moved by this LFO. Now, this is just one oscillator. What we can do is we can knock on a second oscillator and mess around with that as well. Let's go for distortion. And what we could do is we could select um, the wave position again, and we can have the same LFO moving it, or we could have a different one moving it. I think I'm going to use the same one, but I'm going to get it done in reverse. So if I bring this down here, one starting at the top, the other starting at the bottom. Nice. Okay, let's go for uh, modern uh, mode as well in the effects section. I like this, this is really fun. Okay, so we're gonna warp and fold this, this wavetable now. There we go, okay. Now I'm gonna detune this one slightly. Um, so you can detune in semitones or synths. Uh, semitones, there's 12 on an octave. I'm going to detune this by 5. I'm going to go minus 5. Very nice. Okay. Wow. All sorts of beautiful. Okay. Now, we, we're only using two oscillators and one LFO. There's so much more that we can do. We have uh, a second LFO. We have three envelopes. Yes, three. Um, and you can actually use them for looping and triggering and all sorts of things. And then also you have two filters. You can use them together or separately. Then you have a whole global setting as well uh, that allows you to add or subtract voices. And you can add glide and you have lots of different options for unison as well, which will thicken up and slightly detune your sound. It's, it's just amazing. It's all sorts of fun. So uh, let's go. Right. Okay. So let's try. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wee bit of randomness to this as well. I'm going to uh, use a uh, I'm going to use the second LFO and I'm going to use the randomization. And uh, yeah, let's see how we get on with this. So if I go to, um, let's see, uh, what do I want to change with this? Not that anyway. Let's even look at the first envelope. So 
what this is is it's your amp envelope so this will dictate how much sound goes out of the synth and into your speakers or your headphones or whatever you're using so you've got an attack decay sustain and release so if i take the release in as much as i can as soon as i let go of the key it stops if i increase this so it's like any other synth in that respect so let's uh, get something uh, percussive And if I go in now to loop mode and decrease the loop. and the decay. If I keep going. Now what I could do is I could say I want that decay to be moved with uh, LFO2. So if I click here in decay, uh, amp decay, and then I go over to LFO2 and turn that up. <laughs> oh, there's chaos. There's good chaos. Gained up. Take it down a bit. So yeah, loads of fun with that. Um, you could even say, uh, if I want to get rid of that, by the way, I just double click here and that resets what uh, what I done previously. So I'm gonna take this back up again now and create. Okay, that's grand. Let's have a wee look at something else now. So say if I want to use this LFO to create uh, some movement within our filters. Once we start using those, we can do that. Our filters are here on the left hand side. So I'm going to do a wee bit of filter in here. Uh, there's two filters. I'm going to turn on the second one as well. And I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to add some resonance. And I'm going to change the filter types to anything other than clean. Um, because what that does is it gives me, um, let's go for the MS-20 filter type drive. So I can drive each one of these filters now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this LFO to move that. So let me just reset everything by clicking on it twice. Okay, right, so uh, let's go for frequency, first of all. So filter one frequency, moved by LFO two, and then I'll do the second one as well. So this is the second uh, cutoff frequency uh, for the second filter. And I'm gonna go minus 17 or thereabouts for that one. I want this to go even slower. All sorts of beautiful. <laughs> Could just sit and do this all day. Um, so yeah, that's just to give you an idea of the um, the basics of what you can do within this. It's it's pretty endless. It really is. Um, you need to experiment and have fun with this for for you know as long as it takes. 
Um, so yeah, let's um, do another few things like um, well again. So the the uh, filter types are the same as any other synth. Um, you've got uh, twelve and twenty four dB uh, slope. So twenty four is uh, is a lot tighter. Uh, the 12 is a lot more gradual, so it will affect the sound because you're cutting off frequencies at that point. Um, but yeah, you can have a mess with that and see how you get on. And then if we look at the global settings as well, um, the global settings are really interesting actually. So at the minute we're set to polyphonic here. You can go to monophonic if you like, if you're creating bass sounds. Uh, we have eight voices, which is all sorts of beautiful. Um, you might want to experiment with that. The more voices, the more complex your sound, the less the less complex. Now, if we go to unison mode and we hold down a note and then pop it on and have a listen, you can hear the difference to the sound. Let's try classic. And if we up the voices amount, it will change the sound as well. So this sets the number of uh, running oscillators per wave table oscillator, which is nuts. So there's lots going on. The more voices that you have here, the more complex your sound is. Obviously, the more that you're doing within Ableton, the more your computer uh, needs power. So it's you know it's it's gonna just be careful if you're running uh, this with eight voices and you've a lot going on. You know you might find Ableton or your computer, I should say, struggling. So keep an eye on that. I'm gonna go back down to five or maybe four. And also, um, more isn't always more. Um, sometimes less is more as well. So just keep an eye on that. Let's try a different mode, try Shimmer. Gonna increase the amount as well. You can do that with any of these settings. So it's like a, it's like a dry wet. Um, beautiful. Okay, let's try noise. Very nice, okay. So unison amount, I'm going to put um, maybe say uh, I'm going to go for envelope 2 for unison amount. So what this is going to do is it's going to jump the unison amount up to around about 45 and then down to whatever this is, say 23 or something, and then down to zero, I think. Let's increase it. Just take a loop on. Yeah, it's hard to hear much of a difference there, to be honest. Uh, but there you go. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much everything for this stage, at least anyway. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on some effects as well, because there's not even any effects on here yet, um, or at least effects that are separate from Wavetable. Let's pop on some Echo, and let's go for... This is also uh, Ableton 10, ambient spaces, and 
Turn on Canyon. Just love that sound. <laughs> Add a bit of wobble. This is just one key and held down as well, and the sounds that we're getting is incredible. So there you have it. That'll give you a basic understanding of Wavetable, what it's for, how it's used. Um, it can be used to generate any sound, to make any bass sound, and any, any pad sound, but also for um, exploration. And um, if you were looking to do uh, kind of soundtrack recording or something like that, you can get some amazing sounds from this to go along with a score for a movie, for example. So experiment, enjoy. And um, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.